Something that isn't talked about enough in national politics is, generally speaking, women's rights. Sure, we talk about abortion a lot, and it's considered controversial. But it's not controversial when you remove literally any of the rhetoric surrounding it. What it boils down to is, do women have the constitutional right to body autonomy? Yes or no? The controversy is in saying no, for giving any sort of justification to state that a woman does not have the right to decide what to do with her body based on either her own desires, decisions, or needs, or the recommendations of her physician. What's more, we only ever talk about women's uh, body autonomy, we only talk about abortions, the right to choose, the right to life. Those are the only ever controversies. What we don't ever talk about nationally, or at least uh, unless you are a woman running for office, is women's equality in terms of equal pay and equal opportunity in the workforce. We also don't talk about the other elephant in the room, which is uh, single mothers or stay-at-home mothers, or granted, to be fair, stay-at-home spouses, but specifically women. And then there's the fourth uh, elephant in the room, which I don't think is addressed at all, which is why are women's products, specifically things that have to do with medical needs or personal hygiene, taxed so heavily and arbitrarily expensive? And on a slightly lesser note is why are women's clothing sizes not universal? If I want to buy a size 38 pair of pants, they're going to be a size 38 no matter what brand I go and purchase or what store I go to. But for women, a size 5 could be anything from this to this. So what, what, what does that even mean? We need some sort of stability and we need some sort of consistency with women's clothing, I think. Uh, dresses should have pockets. And we shouldn't be taxing women's personal hygiene or medical items, period. The fact that medical items are taxed at all is ridiculous, just like we shouldn't be taxing food or water, but I digress. If we're gonna talk about women's issues, we cannot just focus on the right to bodily autonomy. We need to talk about uh, pay equality, we need to talk about uh, professional equality, and then we do need to talk about, well, what if a woman does stay home? What, that should have value, right, to raise children. Think about it. If it costs arbitrarily $1,500 a month per child for daycare, then that's at least what a woman is worth, correct? A stay-at-home mother? Is that not the barest of minimum? Is child support? Well, we're not even talking about that. We're talking about food. We're talking about clothing. We're ta talking about uh, additional, or I'm sorry, initial uh, development, such as reading, play, uh, arithmetic, speech, walking, dressing themselves. These are all skills. These are all activities that take on the full time of a parent, but in this case, specifically women. So why shouldn't that be compensated? Right? right now, the federal government only gives, say, $500 per child in what child care expenses. That's not nearly enough. That's insane. And if you're a single mother working and trying to raise children, how on earth are you supposed to be a good mother and take care of your own health and needs as well? It's ridiculously difficult for most people, especially if you get into the economics of how most of us uh, do not even make fifty or $60,000 a year in this economy. So I propose a myriad of solutions. And of course, the more in-depth answers are on the website. But in general, I propose that the woman's right to choose shall be codified into law, and it will start with a presidential executive order. The equal pay and equal opportunity in the workplace shall also be codified into law, beginning with presidential executive order. Now, in terms of the child care thing, I believe a minimum wage should be paid out by the federal or state government to the tune of $70,000 to stay at home and raise children and take care of children. Not to go to work, to stay home, $70,000. That seems to be an equitable median income in this economy to afford a two-bedroom apartment and get food and supplies and necessary sundries for children and yourself. On a slightly less 
uh, intense topic. I do believe that we should have some sort of universality for women's clothing and women's goods in general. The fact that there's all sorts of changes and discrepancies and this, that, and the other is foolish to me. And then of course, um, women's feminine hygiene products and medical devices should not be taxed, period, dot, end of story. And I think in this way, even though I might be very much so the opposite of a woman, I think in this way that is a start in the right direction to achieving true equity, not simply just equality, but equity in our country with regards to the relationship between women and society and how it's been for the past several hundred years.